Video games have the power to take us away to places we can only dream about. There are games that are better at taking us there than others. When a game is able to take you on their journey, the experience can be unforgettable. These games create everlasting memories. Those are times I personally look back on fondly. I've played many of those games throughout my life on many different machines. One of those is the Nintendo Switch. The Switch has become one of my favorite consoles. I've collected more games for it than any other gaming machine I've ever owned. I love that I can play them at home and on the go. It makes buying games way easier knowing that I can play them anywhere. The game library for the Switch is incredible. We've been very fortunate to get so many great games. With all the games the Switch has, and all the games I've bought for it, it's been difficult to play them all. Some haven't been played. There are many reasons why I haven't played these games, which still remain in their plastic wrapped cases. A lack of interest is the biggest reason. I know at some point I wanted to play them, though I still haven't gotten around to it. Time is also a factor. Not knowing if I like a game is a gamble. Even games that aren't terrible and edge into kind of good territory are still a big risk with limited time. Though, in contrast to this, there are a few games I've played multiple times. They are so good I've decided to put more time into them. They've made that much of an impact on me, I chose to play them again because I know that the time I'll spend will be time well spent. I won't regret it after I put the game down. There aren't many of these that exist. Here are a few of those games. Super Mario Odyssey has become one of my favorite video games in general, not just on the Switch. I love the worlds, or kingdoms as they're called in this game. They're some of the very best places Mario has ever been a part of, and I'm glad I didn't skip it, which I was very close to doing. I haven't always been very hyped on 3D Mario games. This is a little surprising, even for myself, because I'm a big fan of 2D Mario games. Those games have been a staple in my life. Some of them were out before I was born. I learned how to play video games with 2D Mario platformers. Super Mario Bros. 3 and World are some of my favorite games ever made. I even dove headfirst into the 2D side-scroller revival when Nintendo made the new Super Mario Bros. games on the DS and the Wii. I also like the entries made for the 3DS and Wii U. I just love 2D Mario games. I haven't always shared that same love with the 3D Mario games. Well, I should say, I didn't have a chance to develop a love for them. Before the Switch came out, I had only ever played a little bit of the first Mario Galaxy, Mario 3D Land, and Mario 3D World. I love 3D Land and 3D World, they are some of my favorite Mario games, but they are kind of based on the 2D Mario games set in a 3D world. So why haven't I fallen in love with every 3D Mario game? Well, my family skipped the Nintendo 64 in favor of the PlayStation, and we kept that going when Sony released the PS2. I completely missed out on Super Mario 64 and Sunshine. Mario 64 in particular was a big miss. It's gone down as one of the best games ever, and I still haven't played very much of it. I know this is going to be hard to hear but I'm not a big fan of the way it controls. It has nothing to do with the Nintendo 64 controller. I actually really like that controller. It has more to do with how Mario feels. I still haven't been able to rein in how to fully control him in that game. That's on me, and if you like the way he feels, that's awesome. You've been able to do what I can't. You can control Mario in Mario 64. I do, however, love how he controls in the 2D games. So when the Switch came out and a new 3D Mario game was announced for it, I really wasn't all that hyped. My interest level was pretty low. But, I was willing to give it a try. I bought Super Mario Odyssey the day it was released. And after I threw the hat on the T-Rex, I fell in love with it. It's one of the best games I've ever played. The level variety is spectacular, and the level designs are top notch. My favorite being the Lost Kingdom. The music in that stage is unbelievably good. The music overall is very good. Other great locations are the Luncheon Kingdom, the Sand Kingdom, and the Metro Kingdom with New Donk City. I also love that they included the small retro game references. I'm so happy they put that in this game. It was really something being immersed in that old gaming world within this new game. I like that they used different bosses this time around, even if they weren't as memorable as the Koopalings. In fact, I don't remember any of their names or what they really looked like, only that they were bunnies. I still liked them, but the star of the show is Cappy. What an ability. Being able to turn into the enemies is amazing. I've always wondered what it felt like to be some of those things. I love turning into them and walking around. I spent a good amount of time messing around as the common Mario enemies. The cap also lets you get around the worlds, which again, is amazing. Catapulting off poles and riding the electric wires has always stuck with me. The iconic jump off Cappy is always a fun move to pull off, but the cap can also be used as a weapon. Instead of just being able to jump on enemies, the hat can be thrown to take down enemies. That is awesome. Maybe it's a throwback to the boomerang suit. You can do so many things with Cappy. There are sections where you can turn into a tank and shoot a projectile. 
There's also the previously mentioned part where you turn into a T-Rex and stomp your foes. Cappy feels like a natural addition to the Mario ecosystem, and one I fully embraced. There's so much more to this game than I've mentioned here, and I can't wait to play it again. The first game I played for the Switch was The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It was many Switch owners' first game, because it was a launch title. Nintendo famously delayed the Wii U version to release it the same day as the Switch. It was a smart move and paid off handsomely. Breath of the Wild blew me away. Keep in mind that I've been playing Zelda games since the very beginning. Even though the original game had been out for quite some time before I got to it, nonetheless, it was the first Zelda game I played as a kid. I also played Link's Awakening non-stop on the Game Boy. It's still one of my go-to games when I need something to play. I'm a huge fan of top-down Zelda games, so playing a new Zelda game that ditched all those old Zelda staples was a little jarring, but something I welcomed. I'll always have those older games to play. Having something new was exciting. This game is something else. It stood alone as the ultimate open world game for six years. It broke not just the Zelda formula, but most of the gaming norms as well. Being able to climb anywhere you want changed my thinking. I could go in a straight line and not have to go around any mountains. All I needed to do was climb over them. It's something I've always wanted to do. All the games I had played up to this point never offered so much freedom. You can do whatever you want. If you don't want to continue the main story, don't worry about it. This game doesn't care. You can literally just hike around the world doing nothing, and it's still fun. There's so much to see and do, I've never gotten bored of it. The Korok seeds alone can keep you busy for years if you wanted. But Nintendo didn't stop there. Along with climbing, they give us a better way to get down from those peaks with the paraglider. The paraglider ties this whole game together. I use it so much, I forget that it's not in other games. It feels completely natural to use, and it's fun. I love gliding for long distances. I try to use it as much as possible. It's probably the most impactful part of the game that kind of goes unnoticed. Without this ability, I don't think this game would have done as well as it has. It also saves time by helping you glide over terrain while you look around at whatever else you can explore. It can't be understated how much this game relies on exploration. This version of Hyrule is huge, and every region is unique from all the others. From hot deserts and high snowy peaks to everything else in between, including a region that is set in autumn. That might be my favorite part of the game. I found myself walking around the world on foot rather than riding a horse, except for at night. The music is amazing and worth taking a horse out for a ride. I always wanted to discover everything along my path. I found that I'd miss many things when I took my horses out of the stables. I still prefer walking and running around on foot to this day, though the Master Cycle Zero is awesome. It's really amazing that you can pinpoint a location in the distance and you can walk there just like you can in real life. It takes just about as long to do, too. Cooking also made me change the way I thought about things. Making dishes that increase abilities is really fun to explore. I was actually kind of happy that I didn't have to go hunting for hearts everywhere. The biggest complaint that I've heard about Breath of the Wild is that the weapons break too easily. I was also bugged by this at first, because it's difficult to start a game with such weak weapons that break easily. Though, as the game progressed, I found that I liked the mechanic. It got me to use all my weapons instead of using just a few. I also like that some of those weapons have specific elemental abilities like fire, ice, and electricity. Those are fun to use. I also like that the arrows have these abilities. Some of the bows even allow you to shoot multiple arrows at the cost of just one. I find myself hunting down linos for their awesome bows that do this. The enemies are also really tough at first. I remember the first Lionel I fought. He destroyed me, and I was afraid to encounter one for a long time after that. I would go around and avoid them at all costs. Speaking of Lynels, these throwback enemies are awesome. Seeing them in this form was really great. Wizrobes also make a comeback. I'm sure there are more I'm forgetting right now, but I really like the throwbacks through the old games. And they are everywhere. It seems like there are references on every part of the map to most of the older Zelda games. Eventide Island is very reminiscent of one of my favorite Zelda games, Link's Awakening. Nothing will evoke more fear in me than the sound of the piano ramp up that happens when you are spotted by a guardian. These enemies were terrifying for a long time. Eventually I was able to power up Link enough to hold my ground, but that still doesn't take away those fears when I first encountered them. This game has given me hours and hours of extreme joy. I love this game, and I'll be playing it until I can't physically push buttons anymore. Metroid Dread came out at the exact right time for me. I had just started playing through the older Metroid games for the first time. 
I'm glad I played them before this game. I gained a huge appreciation for what they are. Samus Returns in particular was good to play before this game because they are very similar, and I really liked it for the 3DS. It's still the only Metroid game I've 100%ed. Dread has some of the best feeling controls in the whole franchise. Even though they make you use the analog stick to move Samus, they feel great. I would have preferred an option to use the D-pad since it's a 2D game, but it's not a big deal. I found it very natural to control, except for maybe Shine Sparking. I definitely prefer a D-pad for that. The developers gave Samus an amazing amount of dexterity in this game. I love the inclusion of the slide. That made moving around the world so much more enjoyable. I was glad that I didn't have to use the morph ball for every small space. The dash was something I found myself using all the time. It feels great to pull off and Samus feels incredibly agile with it, and it's extremely useful when engaging enemies. The melee counter is back, but somehow it feels better than in Samus Returns, though the timing is a little tricky for some of the enemies. They seem like they're going in for an attack, but hesitate slightly longer than you think they will, and the consequences for getting that timing wrong is bigger than I expected. But when you land those counters, it feels great. You really get the sense that you made a solid hit. This game is tough. I died more in this game than any other Metroid game I've played. The boss fights in particular seem devastating. In almost every fight I felt like I wouldn't be able to get past it. Then, with a few more tries, I began to figure it out, and eventually overcame them. This makes for incredibly memorable encounters. This game has a new enemy that struck the same fear in me as the Guardians in Breath of the Wild. They are the EMMI enemies, or Emmys. These are terrifying, and I was scared of them for most of the game. When I heard their little calls and sounds, I wanted to do everything I could to get away from them. For this, you can use the new cloaking ability. This is fun to use initially, but I found that it wasn't all that effective. I would usually get caught once the ability ran out, though it did make for some tense encounters. By the end of the game, these Emmy robots were so powerful it felt almost unfair. But like all the other enemies and bosses, after a few tries I was able to get past them. What an awesome addition to an already amazing game. The art direction is some of the best on the Switch. I like the moody settings. The lighting and shadows really put you in that world. I wasn't always a Metroid fan. These can be intimidating. I thought they were all underground mazes that you had to get perfectly right or get lost forever. Though that's not completely wrong, it's not right either. Dread has a few parts where I got lost and had to take a breather and figure out what to do next. To be fair, I've done this in every Metroid game. Sometimes you just don't know where to go until something clicks, and that's part of what makes Metroid games great. Metroid Dread came out at a time when I was just getting to know the series. Having been able to experience each game for the first time up to its release made it that much more enjoyable. I liked it so much that I started it over again right after I finished it the first time. It's a great 2D game that I can't wait to play again. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is one of my favorite games ever made. It has everything I like in a game. Superb level variety, great controls, and stellar music. It also helps that it's a 2D side-scroller. This game has meant a lot to me over the years. It's been my go-to when I need something fast-paced and challenging. When I play it, I get lost in the gameplay. It's an actual step out of reality for me. Not many games can do that. I'm usually hyper-aware of what's going on in my surroundings, but this game is different. It grips my attention. The art direction is something else. I've always felt like the Donkey Kong Country games simulate real-life weather really well. The snow effects in Snow Barrel Blast in the first game on the Super Nintendo are still impressive. Alpine Incline in Tropical Freeze does something similar. Living in high mountains, this level captures that climate perfectly. You can almost feel the cold air as Donkey Kong is ascending. The fog in the lower valley and the clouds hovering on the mountain peaks is such a nice touch. That happens in real life all the time. I connect so well to this game personally. That just doesn't happen all that often with the vast majority of games. Maybe I like it so much because I was so excited to play it for the first time, and it lived up to that hype. That never happens anymore. I usually try to block out any trailer or info in a game before it releases, just so I don't get hyped and inevitably let down by my own imagination. But that was different with Tropical Freeze. I was one of those weirdos that couldn't wait for it to come out. I loved playing it for the first time on the Wii U. It was a challenge, but I loved it. I've been a fan of the series since the beginning, the original Donkey Kong Country remains my favorite game to this day. I played it as much as I could as a kid, and it's also a challenging game. I remember being taken away by how amazing each stage was. It was unlike any other game I had ever played. The music is amazing, as well as the controls. I would say the first three Donkey Kong Country games have the best feeling controls of any game ever made. When the series returned on the Wii, I couldn't believe my eyes. Nintendo had made a new Donkey Kong Country game. 
It's the reason I bought a Wii. I didn't regret that decision at all. It's a great game. I've played it many times, though I would say the 3D version is better. Though there were a few things I didn't care for, I immediately noticed how different the characters felt to control. Those original games felt like you had complete control over those characters. Actions happen immediately after you press the button. These new controls take some getting used to. Donkey Kong feels a little sluggish and heavy. There's a real weight to him. And you can only play as Donkey Kong. Diddy Kong is in this game, but he's more of a power-up. Giving you more hearts and letting you glide for a few seconds with his jetpack. If you've ever played the first Donkey Kong Country game, you know Diddy was the one you wanted to be. Also, there were a few level types that didn't make the cut for the new entry. Those being water and snow stages. They just aren't there. I was so excited to play those because they resonated so much with me as a kid. Playing this new game and completing each level, they were nowhere to be seen. Instead, we got a fossil area, which is cool, but I liked those snow stages. They were difficult to beat, and when I did overcome those levels, that feeling of accomplishment was unreal, because it was earned. Returns had moments like that, but those ice, snow, and water stages were in the past. That is, until four years later when Nintendo released the newest Donkey Kong Country game. Tropical Freeze's central theme is based around snow and ice. A dream come true for me. I couldn't wait to play it. But what about the other stage type that was missing? In the first level, after you break out of the airplane and grab the extra life to the left, you slide down the embankment into the water. As you begin to swim around, which you couldn't do in returns, a version of aquatic ambience slowly takes over. After this, just a few seconds into the game, I knew I was in for an adventure that felt like it had been tailor-made for me. That was a moment I'll never forget. There's a whole world and levels themed around swimming, ice, and snow levels. There are also other amazing level types. My favorite area is probably Juicy Jungle. This island has some really great stages and music. The music overall in this game is amazing. David Wise returned to compose it. He was the one who did the music for the first and second game, and also Donkey Kong Country 3 on the Game Boy Advance. It really adds to the gameplay. The transition from Aquatic Ambience to Lockjaw Saga gets me every time. There's just one thing I didn't like about this game. I couldn't play it on the go. Unlike Donkey Kong Country Returns that had a portable version on the 3DS at this time, Tropical Freeze was stuck on the Wii U, meaning I could only play it when I was at home. Because I was traveling all the time for work, I only had a few chances to play it. That is, until Nintendo released it on the Switch. I was really happy they did this. I had no problem buying it again. I wanted so bad to have this game on the go, and I finally got it. Playing DKC Returns on the 3DS made me appreciate that game more than when I played it on the Wii. Having Tropical Freeze on a portable also made me appreciate that game even more. I played it every chance I got in my downtime. It was easy because I always had it with me. I had more opportunities to play it. I honed my skills as I traveled for work. It's by far one of the games I've gotten the most out of, both on the Wii U and the Switch. It's been worth every penny because I've played it so much, and that's all thanks to it being on the Switch. Link's Awakening is one of the most unique Zelda games ever made. It doesn't take place in Hyrule. Instead, Koholint Island lays the stage for Link's first handheld adventure. This island isn't just a hunk of land sitting in the ocean, it almost has a life of its own, being a character in the story. Every turn seems to have a puzzle you need to figure out in order to traverse it. It's like a giant dungeon. I love that. Unlike the newer games that give you the freedom to go where you want, whenever you want. Though I like that approach too, there are so many things in this game that give it life and character like the ghost that follows you around until you take him to his house. After he reminisces for a spell, he asks you to take him to his grave, where he finally leaves you to rest. That part shows up out of nowhere, but it's something I've never forgotten. This game is full of moments like this. Mario characters show up in some dungeons, and you can jump on them like Mario does to defeat them. The Monbo fish teaches you a song with a skit. That song gives you the ability to warp to different places on the map. Later Zelda games just have you get out the map and choose the location to go. I'll admit that I like that way too, but this one has you play a really catchy tune to do that. I've never gotten sick of hearing it either. I love that the end goal in this game is a giant egg on top of a mountain. It's things like this that make this Zelda game stand out among the rest. Small encounters like this happen all the time in this game. Link's Awakening is different from most other Zelda games. Zelda's not even in it. You don't need to save a princess. You're just trying to find your way off the island. The puzzles are engaging and the dialogue is some of the best written for a video game. Link's Awakening has many things I love about it. It's absolutely amazing that Nintendo decided to remake it for the Switch. The art style is superb. 
I know I'll get some flack for this because it isn't to everyone's taste, but I love it. It's like looking down on a tiny plastic Zelda world. It was a dream come true that we got this game. The music is great. I like how they reimagined it. Some of the tracks are amazing. This is a great game and it's extremely important to me. I got the original game with a Game Boy for one of my birthdays growing up. This is the very Game Boy and Link's Awakening cartridge I got that day. It's so important, I kept both for all these years. I can't say the same for my NES, SNES, or even my PS1. I have revisited this game many times throughout my lifetime. I've played the monochrome original, the DX edition on the Game Boy Color, and also that same edition on the 3DS Virtual Console, and now this remake many times over. When asked what Zelda game people should start with, I usually steer them toward the original Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, or Link's Awakening. I mention that they will probably need a guide to get through the first game, but it's good to know where everything started. I usually emphasize that Link's Awakening is my favorite out of the bunch, and there's a newer version for them to play on the Switch. These top-down games are the foundation that all Zelda games are built on. Even Tears of the Kingdom has references to this game. Having played these older titles has made me appreciate the newer games even more. If there's one Zelda game you should experience, I would confidently recommend Link's Awakening. Video games have an incredible power. They take you away to places you can only dream about. The Switch has given us that power at home and on the go, transforming the way games are played. We don't have to split our time and money into two different gaming worlds. They are combined into one console. The Switch has a vast game library. There's not enough time to get around to every game, but there are incredible games made for the Switch that deserve to be played, some even more than once. These are some of those games. I'll continue to play them in the coming years, and most likely, the rest of my life. <laughs>